whole Dallas crew is absolutely phenomenal. Like, just they're like tatted up pretty gnarly, but like the kindest, <laughs> most like just most friendly group of people ever. Like, it's it's hard to explain. It's like definitely a different vibe out there for sure. Welcome to the United States Fingerboarding League Fingerboard Podcast. I'm your host, LeWine Cunningham, and I'm excited to be chatting with Jordan McKennis of Tricky Fingerboards. Jordan's also known as Tricky underscore Fingerboards on Instagram. Jordan, thanks for coming on the podcast. How are you? Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I am in between cities, man. We have been traveling the country on tour, and it's nice to be at home this time doing a podcast instead of at the hotel. So I'm doing pretty good. Uh, it's but it's always been com- it's always comfortable being at home. Most definitely, definitely. So Jordan, you are located out of Copper's Cove, Texas. Where I just recently moved to Belton, and I'll be moving again soon. But yeah, just this area, Copper's Cove, Texas, is where it originated from. So people that aren't familiar with that area, what's the next largest city that people might recognize? Austin, Texas. I'm like an hour out. I just got a new job, actually. So I I drive to work for Austin, Texas. That's where everybody, like capital of Texas, nobody knows, which I always think is funny. Nobody knows where I originate from. But Austin is the next biggest city. So that's like the closest. I'm like an hour north. Gotcha. Right on. I know uh, everything's bigger in Texas for sure. Yeah. Man, we've got some history together. I'm pretty excited to kind of get into that. But uh let's talk to the let's talk to our people. Like tell us a little bit about your background, how you got into fingerboarding. So I started skating actually when I was like nine. And I always had that I didn't know much about tech decks at the time. So I always had that like that feeling in me. Like I always wanted to learn new tricks. And then when it would rain, I'm like, damn, I, I still want to skate or I just I want to have like some form of skating and I didn't have a lot of video games back then I didn't play a lot of video games back then and uh like I want to say the next year uh I met one of my one of my best friends I don't know him anymore like one of my old friends and he gave me a tech deck and ever since then it was back then when they had like the 26 millimeter tech decks like super thin yeah back and I just never put it down I had that specific board until my parents deployed to Iraq and I had it for like five, six years, something like that. And then I've, I've just been, I've been fingerboarding for about 14, 15 years now, I want to say. And yeah, it was kind of like a, a drug, one of those toys that just couldn't put it down. Like I get into new stuff, put those things down, still have this little thing. And I I just even now I I still can't I still can't put it down I can't I I like go without fingerboarding for a little bit and I'm just like man I kind of need it I kind of need it like where's the fingerboard man freaking love it no I hear you on that for sure I am if you guys haven't been paying attention to the podcast like I am definitely a gamer and I love fingerboarding and you got the X Defiant beta out this weekend it's been out yeah. for you guys it's already been over but it basically was out like last weekend and uh i am like torn between gaming and going out in the garage and just like <laughs> us just fingerboarding on the park and stuff and so it's yeah. uh i feel you it's just back and forth back and forth for real yeah so you've been doing this for a long time 14 15 years which it definitely shows it definitely shows so when did you make the switch where you're just like you know what i'm gonna start making fingerboards uh well i used to i used to have a couple friends that used to fingerboard with me and they like moved away and got out of fingerboarding and my dad has always owned like he has he owns a car uh car audio business so i've always kind of like wanted to be an entrepreneur in a way and uh believe it or not i wanted to start a skateboard company and fingerboarding I, i was making paper fingerboards back then and i didn't know much about like the fingerboarding scene and I was just making a bunch of paper fingerboards and designing them and whatnot. And then I, I started to learn about like fingerboarding and whatnot. Started seeing Mike Snyder and all of them, like um, Alex Christ and all of them, Nico Frank, all of them. And I realized like people have businesses with this and whatnot. And me and my friend back in the day wanted to start a company, like we can make boards and sell them and whatnot. But he was never really as serious as I was. 
And what took me so long after we had made that decision was I just couldn't find a name. Like I knew even back then as a, as a kid, I knew legally you can't just like throw out a name because it can always come back and people can sue you. So like it took me years to find a name. And I was in Spanish class. And I'm not sure if you ever played PlayStation 2, SSA Tricky, the snowboarding game. Yep. That's exactly where my name came from. No like, way. I, I, I loved that game. I grew up playing it all the time. It would be the only game I'd, I'd pop in the PS2 if I didn't have anything else to play. Uh, and I'd, I'd play it for hours, like lose track of time. And I went through a bunch of names. And then just one day I was just thinking like, I wrote down the name and then I drew it up in a little font. And then I looked it up on Google to see if it was like, if anybody took it, I noticed nobody took it. So I just started from there. And it was never really, I never really had like a plan to turn it into a business. I just wanted a name to put on the fingerboards really. And then it kind of like grew into what it is now. And it's, it's, it's been a blessing, honestly, it's been such a blessing. I feel that I feel that for sure. We didn't really wanted to start off kind of like a business. I really just wanted to just host events, but in order for us to do it on the scale that we're basically doing it as we had to pretty much turn it as a business. And so when we started in 2021, like it was just kind of like a, a mess around and find out. Cause I wasn't even sure if anybody was even going to come to these things. And so like, I'm like, well, we pick up some parks let me travel. Let me see if people will actually come out and stuff. And so it was definitely an eye opener and it's just the rabbit hole for sure. Just, it goes deep. Yeah. You always like, you always have this one thing and it's like, well, let's see how it goes one more time. And then it just like blows up and you're like, well, I mean, I mean, we're getting some good feedback, you know? Yeah. That's how we kind of were. It's just like, you know, we started during COVID. And so like, it was just a matter of like, you know, your people even really kind of doing this is in-person events, even really a thing. Like there was just a lot of unknown unknowns for sure. Yeah. So you've been pretty much in Texas almost all your life? Yeah. Uh I spent like a semester in Florida because my both my parents had to deploy to Iraq at the time. Um, but besides that, yeah, my Texas entire life, natural born Texan. Well, tell us about your just experience overall in Texas. I mean, like I looked at the Texas scene and I'm looking at like, you know, Kelsey's fingerboards and Texas rendezvous. And so like, you know, fingerboarding in Texas runs deep for sure. And so I don't know if you've been involved in any of that or what is that? What does the Texas experience look like for you? Uh, man. Okay. So it's, it's crazy. It's like that you ask me that question and people know who I am, like your fingerboards nowadays. And like, nobody understands where I come from. So I didn't I didn't know about Kelsey and Jeremy and and everybody in Dallas and nothing like that. Like coming up, I did not know about them. And then on top of that, I did not know that they were like Texas based people. So like watching them and then seeing them in person was like, wow, you like it's a long street, but you live right down the street from me. And then like getting to know who they are, because I, I met Kelsey and Jeremy at Rendezvous, Texas Rendezvous 7. So you actually been to those events. Yes, yes. Right before, literally, I went to seven, eight, and nine, and ten was ten was when COVID happened. That's wild. I popped back in for a very brief moment back, probably were like Texas Rendezvous six. Maybe I got back in the fingerboarding maybe for like two or three months, and then I popped back out for like a good six year like just hiatus. And so, like, I vaguely remember seeing it, but like, I remember watching it on YouTube, and that's when it kind of caught my eye. And so, like. I've been following the whole like Texas rendezvous for a little bit, but like yeah. the fact that you actually have that history and you were there and you met her and Chubby Muffin and all those guys, that's wild. Yeah. It was, it was sick, man. And rendezvous seven, I'm like a kid. Like I, I had just graduated. I think I had just graduated high school and it's my first fingerboard event ever. I'm nervous. Like it was, I had a little buzz going for my name. So like a little, like a couple of people knew me, but I was just kind of going there to get the experience. I had met Stack, Chetty from Stack. I met Vlad from Catfish Barbecue and I met Christian from Collier. I met all of them at my very first event. So it was like, or I won't ever, I won't ever forget that. And then also watching Jeremy, Chubby Muffin, somebody I'm watching on YouTube all the time. Like every time he drops a video, you're just like, you're there, you know? And then 
Like I did this one trick where I was doing all these sex change 50 and it caught his eye and he was just like, yo, that's sick. And it kind of like gave me like gave me a head rush because I'm like, yo, you you notice you notice me, you know, and it's, it's just like the Texas fingerboard scene is really like warm. It's it's really welcoming. We I haven't I haven't been anywhere or met any homies that have like done me wrong or like rubbed me the wrong way, give me a, a, a bad vibe or anything like that. Um it's it's mainly been the Houston homies. I met like them back back in like Rendezvous Seven, and then the Dallas homies. I want to say I met a couple years after that, and I actually met them through somebody I got back into fingerboarding with because they knew him, and then he was like, "Yo, they're excited to meet you and whatnot." And I was like, "Oh, that's 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 sick." I was just nervous, kind of antisocial, and went up there and nothing but warm warm welcomes. And open arms and all of that it was it's 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 a beautiful scene and it's just it's growing so much and so fast now like uh and the only thing the only struggle is like austin being the biggest the the capital of texas there is like little to no fingerboard scene that's actually kind of weird to me too because even when i was looking to put the tour somewhere in texas I knew like Texas Rendezvous was a thing and I was sad when I realized that it hasn't been going on for quite some time. And I was like, who's doing stuff in Texas? And so like, you know, good vibes popped up on my radar. I didn't really know who they were until, you know, when I was till probably like 2020 and I've been kind of following them and stuff. And I'm just like, huh. And so I made a trip all the way out there. I met Benny and stuff like that with good vibes in their shop and like the crew down there, the whole Dallas crew is absolutely phenomenal like just made of a bunch of just very like just they're like tatted up pretty gnarly but like the kindest <laughs> most like just most friendly group of people ever like it's it's hard to explain it's like definitely a different vibe out there for sure yeah it, it, like it, it throws you off at first because you're like like man you know like those those homies look like you don't you shouldn't mess with them and they start pulling out fingerboards and they're yeah. like, yo, yo, like you want a sesh dog? It's exactly. like, yo, this is amazing. <laughs> For sure. Like everybody, I like everybody just full tatted up, full sleeves, neck tattoos, face tattoos, like the whole nine yards. And then, you know, they're just, you know, gentle giants, man. It's crazy. <laughs> yes, dog. Yeah. Like I always imagine like them. I, I, I always explain them as like, just picture a, an inmate fresh out that's never been to jail. That's that's them right there. For sure. It's uh I I like it down there. It's definitely different. You can't uh you can never judge a book by his cover for sure. Yeah, man, never. And so yeah, it's uh I love it down there. I'm actually pretty excited to be headed back that way here in about two weeks, maybe when this comes out, maybe next week. So I'm excited to be putting Dallas back on the map, uh to Pete for sure. So how did yeah, you get connected with Good Vibes? Uh, like uh, the the friend I got back into fingerboarding. His name is Eric Innocent Fingers. Shout out, shout out to him. Um, I got him back into fingerboarding. Actually, he he had moved uh, back down here to Colleen, the next city over from Copper's Cove, and uh, some homies like skating with. They told him about my fingerboard stuff, and he was like, "Hey, like I want to buy a complete off of you." And then we started just like kicking it and. He went down to, he had moved out to Dallas and then found out the whole scene out there. And he came back to visit and he was like, yo, there's a bunch of homies in Dallas that, that, that want to meet you and whatnot. And I was like, like, who are you talking about? He was like, yo, there's just a bunch of homies. Like, you got to go out there. And I was like, all right, we can, we can, we can just plan. So we planned to go out there and skate. Actually, Benny uh, planned to go out there and meet up with him at one of the, it had just got built in Dallas, one of the newer parks in Dallas. And dude got there, we skated, and well, I don't even, I don't remember everybody I met that day, but dude, it was it was amazing. I was not expecting any of that, like, at all. And then they just started to, like, like grow. Every time I come back, there's a new homie to the group, and I'm like, yo, like, this is, this is amazing. And they knew about, they knew about me. I don't even know how long to be honest. So I felt bad that like, I didn't know them genuinely, but like now it's great. It's fantastic that I know them, but it's kind of, it's also like funny because 
I know all of them and we're all good homies, but the person I got back into fingerboarding, the person who introduced me to them is no, is not really fingerboarding anymore. Like he's not really in the scene anymore. So I'm like, man, this is weird. some people kind of do that. I know a couple of people that were really, really good. And then like, you know, they'll have kids or like something kind of pops up. And so like, I'm hoping that they, you know, they make a strong return back and stuff like that, man. I miss some of these guys that just kind of mm-hmm. left and came back. COVID brought a lot of people out. And then like, as soon as COVID kind of, I don't even want to talk about it, whether it went away or not, but you know, it's one of those things. It's just like, you know, like I, I think you guys got to come back. Like COVID brought us yeah. all out and then COVID went away or we stopped talking about it or whatever. And then like yeah. some people just kind of went back to their, their, their normal routine and stuff. And I'm like, man, you got to come back, come back into the light. No, like we're out of quarantine, man. Come on, man. I know, for real, for real. So I'm gonna be excited if some of these people come back. I'm excited to see uh just peeps all these familiar faces and stuff when I come back on the tour and stuff for sure. Hey, I know. We can have you, huh? Oh, definitely. Well, I do know that we have you down as a medalist. Like you you're definitely one of the stronger fingerboarders in the just the Texas area for sure. If you guys were not part of the Dallas stop last year, this guy right here had the most epic championship match of Game of Skate. We had a epic match in Chicago last year that went absolutely just just wild, like 30, 40 tricks, like deep, like just clutch. But you guys, like a whole 15 minutes, I felt yeah. like for sure on this championship match. And it wasn't long because they're just taking forever. It was long because you guys were busting out tricks and immediately first try just just clutch, just hitting them every time. I think we went through like 15, 20 tricks before like the first letter was even given. Like just yeah. absolutely nuts. Yeah, that 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 game of skate, it definitely is gonna go down in history for sure. That was definitely probably the best game of skate I would ever have in my life. And I also did not expect that, like. Just to be, I was so nervous. So the the consistency and some of the tricks I was landing, surprising. And Maxi was saying the same thing. Like, man, I did not think I had that. And but we we also like we'll go head to head. Like we'll play games of skate and just try and one up each other. So we have battles like that. But that definitely had to be like the best battle at the best time for sure. And that is the best battle i have ever witnessed even on tour this year like all three seasons combined i've never seen a battle that just intense that many tricks landed like ever like i was afraid you guys were gonna run out of tricks like it was that crazy that's, oh that's what it was coming to for sure i was like man like if you had a list written down like i mean you you would have been at the bottom of the list <laughs> like like anybody got a pen i need to make a new list real you guys were banging them out i was in i was we're the whole crowd i mean everybody was just like everybody literally stopped what they were doing and like the entire room just eyes on you like if we would have panned out all like 80 hundred people literally just surrounding this game of skate it went that long people were like weren't even realized there was even a game of skate championship match game going on they're like what is everybody looking at and they realized that like these guys are just literally just boom 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 boom, like back and forth and then it it like we ended up being like a, yeah like a 15 minute game and it was t to t like yeah. it was for it like was 10 minutes t to t i'm like there's no way this guy's gonna hit this trick and sure enough like boom you hit it and you battle back and max hits it i'm just like man this is like this is intense <laughs> yeah it was so sick though it was so sick and you're also uh, first place, best run street, second place, game of skate, second place, best trick skate, or best trick street as well. And I'm just like, you are, you are extremely gifted fingerboarder for sure. Like you didn't, I mean, the competition was stiff. Like, I mean, there were some serious people like lined up and stuff. And so you weeded out a lot of people to get to where you got. So kudos to you. For those people that are like, you know, just listening and trying to figure out like, maybe I want to like do, maybe I want to compete. Maybe I want to try to like get more consistent. Like for those that are looking to compete, whether it's in the Dallas stop or the Toronto Canada stop or the Philly stop, that's meaning the one of the stops are still left. Like, do you have any advice, any secrets, any tips? Sign up and go for it. Definitely. Because I know I was nervous. I'm always nervous when it comes to contests. I maybe like the tricks that I do may like shock y'all. 
And and y'all might think I practiced it. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because I'm gonna be honest with you. When you said when you said you had to start like for the best run, when you said you had to start from the quarter, I literally had to make up an entire like run on the spot. I did not have anything. I did not have anything planned for something like that. So it's kind of like, but you also know what you can and can't do. You know what you're consistent with and you know what you're not consistent with. So it's kind of like hit and miss. You can go, you can play the safe run and you can do everything you're cool with and, or you can play like, you can get a little risky and like throw some, throw some wild stuff in there and it just may work out. That's, that's literally, that's literally all I do. All the combos and all of the, the crazy stuff is literally just, practice but like you have to be willing to go for it and figure out how things work for you don't be and don't be don't be nervous about like a contest at the end of the day as long as you feel good about your run that's that's all that matters because I was telling everybody I did not win at all I was just like yo I'm hyping the, the run definitely definitely so that's uh that's solid advice right there for you guys for sure so if you guys aren't familiar with how like best run works, we've got 45 seconds on the clock. You start from the top of either one of the, I guess you would call them like a pyramid quarter pipe type of deal. And then you start from either the right or left, whether you're, you know, right or left-handed or you want to start switch or regular. And then you basically have the uh, entire park. I mean, you get points for utilizing the entire park. Not only switch tricks will definitely get you more points. Style, steez, get you some points. Technical tricks will definitely get you some points. And so... For those that are looking for a little bit more like, you know, what would give me the most amount of points for a solid run, it's really just being consistent. Bust out a lot of consistent tricks. Um, if you can throw in a banger or two, like somewhere in the middle towards the end, I mean, you're going to have a pretty solid run for sure. And then best trick street, like some advice for you guys on that as well, which you have one whole minute to land this trick. Obviously, if you can land it in three tries, it's a lot better than landing it on your 30th try. So bales will definitely count against you, but definitely try to make sure that your best trick is actually doable. So we have a lot of people that are trying like some crazy tricks, but they're not able to get it within the time limit. And so make sure that you're doing a trick that is doable within a minute for you, preferably something that's definitely doable and within like 10 tries or less. And so if you can get a really crazy combination trick, whatever in 10 tricks, like 10 attempts or less, like you're looking at pretty strong points for sure. Yeah, because I think... Mine took too many tries, but it didn't take that long. But, and then I think Maxi won first. Maxi didn't take, Maxi took like two tries and he landed his, his, his stuff, man. He's, he's so, he's so, he's so gold medalist. He's so gold medalist, man. I know, Max, <laughs> I don't want to say his last name. I know I'm going to butcher the hell out of it, but uh, Max F, if you're out there listening, man, like you are definitely the future for sure. He's young. He's got plenty of just just time ahead of him for sure but he's uh he's good man he's he's good you got it man I'll, i gotta give him my crown i'm gonna pass it down go ahead you can have it man and the win a 60 trick plus game of skate is absolutely nuts <laughs> this, i know man this this man this man i couldn't they couldn't think of anything he can't do that's the hard part and he did it without like even really breaking a sweat. Like some of the stuff, I'm just like, there's just no way. Sure enough, no <laughs> problems. Like no problems. Man, it's just like I'm gonna just I'm gonna just bring my A game today. And I was like, I'm gonna bring A minus. Okay, I'm gonna just <laughs> I'm gonna be right under you, man. For sure, he definitely flying first class for sure. With the um, champagne too, <laughs> tip the glass. And if I'm not mistaken, you're a sponsored writer, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so who are you sponsored by? Bread Apparel, Good Vibes, and Destroy FB Co. I also have a, a skate sponsor, Ronin Skate Clan. I just recently got on the team. Okay, look at you. Yeah. So for there are a lot of people, like, their ultimate goal is to be sponsored. And so I guess kind of tell people, like, the story of how you got sponsored and any advice for them to get sponsored. Uh, so my first official sponsor was Bread, and I was I met New at a Texas fingerboard event in Clue, I want to say in 2018 time frame, and like, uh, we just I've I've been coming out to Houston and hanging with him for a while now, and he had his brand. I never really asked to ride for him or anything like that. I didn't know that he had riders or anything like that, but he told me that like he's starting a team and he wants to put me on, and that was the first one. And then 
good vibes. He kind of like, yo, you're sick. Like we already knew each other. We've been going back and forth. And that's when he was coming out with the Benny Bushings, which were freaking goaded, by the way. Um, but he put me on and he started flowing me some stuff. And then Destroy FB Co. was Texas Rendezvous 8 or 9. PD had flew out for the event. And he actually stayed with New. And I stayed with New that night. And I bought some trucks off of him. And we just, I had a blast with him. We went to the Texas Rendezvous. And then we went to the after party. And then we both slept at New's house. And literally he flew, like, I met him. I met him. We uh, chatted afterwards. And we fingerboarded after the event and he flew back to Cali. I want to say the same day he flew back to Cali, he DM me saying like, yo, do you want to ride for me? I was like, heck yeah, man. Like this is, this is so sick. And uh, man, he's, he's blessed me ever since he was, he was a person to give me my a pro model and, and stuff like that. So that was, that was always sick. And then Ronan, Ronan actually just happened like a couple months ago. I just recently got put on the team. Uh, we were, yeah, this happened in January at the we had an event, the Hoodlum event in January. I remember that. Yeah, and I told him that I had just got kicked off my or I just left my shop sponsor because I was having a bunch of complications at the time with him. And then he was like, Man, I'd love to like I'd love to put you on my team. I was like, I mean, if you're down, I'm down. And that's one of the Dallas homies. So i I'm always down to rep one of the Dallas homies. So and he put me on the team. Uh since then, sent me a sponsor pack. I love his shape. I love his style, I, I go back and forth with him, like, <laughs> excuse me. And he shows, like, true love. It's not, it's not, it's not one of those things where it's, like, I'm only putting you on because you're good. It's, like, you're good. Like, we're homies, but you're also good at skating, you know? Definitely. And I'd say some advice for getting sponsored, for sure, is, like, for all the kids who are going to watch this podcast and watch it all the way through, the best advice I can give you for sponsorship is to not look for one at all. And I always say that because I did not like getting into fingerboarding and starting this company and all of that stuff. I did not expect or look for a fingerboard sponsor at all. I was literally just getting into it to meet the community and see how big it was and learn about it. It was literally just like that. That's where my mind was. So the sponsorship, the only, that's the reason why I still have the same sponsors is because I didn't expect to be sponsored. So the people that are going to sponsor me, I'm going to be loyal to and stop going to different companies like, hey, are you sponsoring? Are you looking for a team? Because that annoys people. You got to realize that behind the business, there's a person and people get annoyed with like small things when it comes to like stuff like that. You know, like don't don't just blow up somebody because like we 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 really do like as deck makers as deck makers. And like business owners, we really do appreciate your support, but there's, there's only so much we can do. And when it comes to sponsorship, there's a lot behind the scenes that you don't know about. And you have to understand and be able to understand before you can just ride for somebody. Because as a kid, you're going to say, yes, you're getting free stuff and you're repping this, this company, but it's an investment to the company, you know, like we're spending money on you and then promoting you for you to promote us. Like, is that it's a give and take. And then another piece of advice is all of my sponsorships are from homies, like people I've met in person. I am not sponsored by anybody I have not met in person. I have not. And I don't, I don't rep, I don't rep anybody's brand if I don't back anything. Like people know nowadays that I don't wear Nike and it's because I don't rep, I don't like Nike. I don't like how it's run. That's, my own personal opinion, but that's just it. I'm not just going to go out and rep any company. And also, if you are going to get sponsored, support the person you want to be sponsored by before. Just don't, they'll just like, hey, can you give me free stuff? Because I can't afford it. We all, we all understand. We are all struggling too. But hey, like it costs money if you want free stuff. It's only free to you and not free to me, you know? So just keep, keep that in mind. Like always, always practice always practice and don't don't like give it give it like two years you should be figured don't i don't care how good you get you should be fingerboarding for at least two years before you even look or want to look for a sponsor that's the minimum that's pretty solid advice for sure that's very solid advice i'm noticing to probably about 90 95 percent of the fingerboarding community that is sponsored it, they're being sponsored by people that they personally know people that they hang out with people that 
they may have met once or twice and then you know all of a sudden now they're they're all just they're hanging out all the time chit-chatting online all the time like they're just there's some kind of relationship there and so a lot of people don't realize that like you know the quickest way to get sponsored is to develop relationships with those company owners and the easiest way to do that, which may be difficult depending on who you are, where you live, is to basically get out into the fingerboarding community. If there's a meetup somewhere, an event, it doesn't even have to be like something that we're even hosting. I mean, there's a lot of smaller events happening all over the nation. And so if you have the opportunity to get out, go to another fingerboarding shop, a skate shop, if they got anything fingerboarding going on, like just get out into the community and just meet people. And then from there, like normally you just get connected with those those company owners and a lot of times you know they're just small board makers but they're just you know looking to kind of be on the up and up and if you're good enough and they like you like that's the quickest way i think that anybody can really just get sponsored so literally because what back in january the same the same person the same person i ride for just got put on gone fingerboards and he's he's been around the entire gone crew for like two years and they just started putting and they just put him on. But like he was not looking to be put on the team. He just wanted to be around everybody. That was it. And then boom. You never I always say sponsorship is like a present, like an unexpected present. You never know when you're gonna get it, but it, it may just happen, you know. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the motorcycle scene. If you guys aren't really familiar with like how like motorcycle clubs work, it's like you gotta be a prospect and like that prospect has to go through so much grunt work and they have to do it for, you know, typically a year minimum, depending on the size of the club, but sometimes two or three years before they can even be like remotely even considered to be an actual member of that motorcycle club. And so it's, there's definitely a process and there's definitely a grind, but it's literally all about the relationships and stuff that you can make the people, the connections that you can basically just make in the fingerboard community with those company owners and stuff. And so if you're looking to get sponsored, that's definitely the way. Yes, definitely the way. I don't really think that we touched on your fingerboarding brand that much. Like, tell us about Tricky Fingerboards. Like, what all you got going on? Because, like, I know you do a lot of drops and stuff like that. But, I mean, like, tell tell people what you got going on. I mean, you make uh, really, really good fingerboards. And I feel like we didn't talk about it enough. Well, thank you. Um, I... Man, tricky is 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 like a whole nother person nowadays. Man, I gotta I gotta kind of look at it third person nowadays. Uh, but I started this back in high school, and this has been like a dream of mine. This has been a dream of mine now, and I do I do drops now. I I just went back to going doing stuff. Give me a second. Hey, go lay down. Sorry, my dog is acting up. Go lay down. Um, I do jobs now. I was trying to treat it more like a more like a skateboard company uh, where you just kind of like you can put the team graphics up on the site and then have people pick through it. But I realized like in fingerboarding, people don't if you're not really like posting whatnot, like social media wise, like people won't be able to check out the links. So I'm going back to drops. Uh, I just recently got two new molds and probably going to be pumping out some decks with those soon. But I have a bad habit of of like as soon as I get something new, I want to like like get all my work into it so I can pump it out fast, you know, like as soon as it comes. But I'm probably going to end up dropping those next year. Um, and then with those two molds, they're going to be more secret. Like I'm not going to do as many drops. It's not going to be as as available as the H town or the D town. Uh, I'm gonna like I have I have some I have some ideas in mind for sure that. Uh, I haven't really seen too many people do. Um, I've, I've I've actually been working on a lot. I just I just recently dropped skateboards. I don't have those anymore. They blessed me with the sellout. And man, I have new graphics dropping. I have fifty boards for the summer drop for all of summer. I haven't planned out officially when I want to drop them because I am also turning all of my team riders pro uh, in a couple of weeks. And I want to draw, I want to get those out because like they've been writing for me for like a year, over a year or probably two years now. And they, they deserve, they've been deserved this and I've just been slacking. So I want to drop those, uh, more clothes. I want to do way more collabs. I used to do a lot of collabs back then, but I don't know, I guess, I guess people want this, people want their hyped, their hype name. So they don't want, they don't want to mix 
they don't want to mix their names with certain people. And I get that. I get that. But I'm I'm definitely working on some more collabs, uh, some more skateboards. I want to grow my team. I recently, a couple of weeks ago, I announced that I'm looking for another team rider. But I want I want somebody who's actually like gonna represent. You know, like all the people I have on the team now are like homies. But I want to I want to sponsor somebody that I can actually like within the next like five years that like, we can we can like do some things together. You know, not not just somebody who's like. I'm going to get free stuff. I'll post a couple of clips and then I'm going to leave the team or they're just getting it to get a free pack or something like that. Like I really want to collab with somebody. I, I think it's more than just sponsorship. Like you're, you're making a friend at the end you're of the day. You're talking about a lifelong partnership right there. You're talking no, like that's, that's, that's what I want. That's just, no, I hear you. I feel that. It'd just be dope. Like you don't have to like necessarily rep my brand, you know, cause I don't really see tricky as a brand. It's more like a family cause everybody's tricky. You're tricky. I'm tricky. Like the math, the math problem is tricky. All the combos we do are tricky. Like fingerboarding literally is tricky. Like, like it's, it's all, it's all tricky. It's not, it's not really like a company. That's why I don't, I don't ever see. And then the, the explanation for my logo is actually the X's or for the eyes means that you don't see, like you don't. And then like the black and white means like color, like the main colors, like you don't see color and then you have the smile. And that's, as a kid, I always say, like, we all smile in the same language, you know? Like, so that was, that's always been my thing. Like, you don't see, I don't see color. I've always seen people, like, as they are, I never, like, you're this race or you're this religion or nothing like that. That's just, I see people as they are. And then we all smile in the same, we all smile in the same language. I Yeah, I feel that 100%. I think uh, being, like, people of color, like, it's, definitely uh easier for us to relate to that than anybody for sure i think that uh you said you had a couple moles do you have uh any other like upcoming projects you want to give a shout out to or is everything super hype getting ready to hit 2024 man i have i have i'm working on a fingerboard part uh i was supposed to be working on a skate part uh and it was supposed to drop before my birthday but I rolled, I, I rolled the living mess out of my ankle yesterday, and I might have to like push that back a little bit. Um, besides the molds, honestly, I haven't. I have just like new graphics. Uh, I have a new product dropping by the end of summer, which I think would 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 uh, kind of change the fingerboard game just a little bit. I'm not gonna say like a new product, just like a new way a new way to push something that's that's could have been done like it's it's more convenient for everybody to have this one thing you know okay well you got me intrigued now are you gonna yeah. give us a little little uh little sneak peek or is this gonna be in the hush hush until the end of summer well i can i can let you know no um i've been working on like project personal parks personal project parks so well that's what i call it project personal park so everybody in the fingerboard scene Everybody in the fingerboard scene wants a skate park. Everybody in the fingerboard scene wants a skate park. The problem with it is, is that they're either too expensive or they take up they take up too much space. Or so much. I literally, so I I've I've been working on this for three years, trying to come up with like a concept for it. And I even I actually I actually told Benny about it and I'm trying to like get with him to start doing like more projects with it. But uh I can build I can build a park. It's gonna be two feet by two feet. That's gonna be like the standard size. And then we can build like extensions and customize it and whatnot. But two by two is two standard size. Uh I feel like it would that's like the best size to fit in a room and it also gives you more space to like fingerboard and build stuff. And like with ever with with the obstacles that I want to build and proportions and whatnot, two by two just became that that one perfect size, that happy medium. And I'm trying to get the price to stay under two hundred and fifty dollars shipped. And these parks will both will be stylish and both ambidextrous. And then whenever I get more into it, I'll be able to customize it how people want to. And then on top of that, we'll be having additions to the extra park. So you can buy this one piece and let's say 2023, you can buy this park this year. And then by 2025, we have an additional park that's an add-on to that park, you know, so you can. Uh, so you're definitely talking module then for sure. 
Yeah, kind of like I seen how Cali Rams do theirs, mm-hmm. and I like before they came, I was starting about it. But even those, like I love their obstacles, but even those are still tend to get a bit expensive, you know. No, I completely understand. It's mainly just the time and the labor and stuff that goes into it. So you may have, you know, $100 worth of materials in it, but you may have, you know, 50, 60 hours into it. And so that's where yeah. the price of the parks just gets crazy. It's just the yeah. amount of love and manpower that it takes to put one of these together. Yeah, and I always understand that because, man, I still, to this day, I still want, I still want a Black River, still want a Black River Park, but... One, I don't have the space. Two, I don't have money. So I'm just like, you got to figure out one. And then like a lot of kids aren't able to buy like obstacles or something like that. So my plan with this was every time like I can sell a drop or something, I want to make some and like give it away to kids that aren't able to get like parks and stuff like that. So that part of my, that part or that product of like that I'm dropping will basically be like a nonprofit because I'm going to use all of the money to get more materials to give away so that everybody can have a park, you know, and it, and it, and the, and the park tucks away, like you can sneak it under your bed and won't take up much space or anything like put it up on the wall, hang it up on the wall, anything like that. And it's, it's perfect. Basically. I always thought of a college dorm when I think of this park, like you just have it right there. No, that's awesome. I, I love that idea. I think that more options for affordable parks and stuff like that is definitely needed. It's definitely a space in the fingerboarding industry that's not really being touched at all for obvious reasons, of course. But I'm glad that you know you're you're definitely getting into that space. This is uh this is exciting. Yeah, it's it's always like always things you can innovate in fingerboarding, things you can tweak or this this and that. And then well, I mean not just with fingerboarding, but nowadays the just trying to find something that you want affordable is kind of like it's kind of like out the question now so if if i'm able to do something like that then i definitely will and and with these parks all of the designs i have right now are ambidextrous so you don't have to worry about being left or right-handed you don't have to worry about hitting it you know so that's that's another thing i wanted to knock out so no that's awesome that's a huge problem in the fingerboarding industry everything is pretty much made for a right-handed person Yes. which I didn't realize this until I had a couple lefties come through to the shop and stuff and realize that like, there's only like, you know, so many things that they can actually skate without having for them to have to learn how to do, you know, nollie and switch tricks. And so I'm like, Whoa, yeah. that's a, uh, that kind of opened my eyes to realize that like, you know, we pretty much designed everything for a right-handed person, even though there's a lot of left-handed people out there. So. Yeah. And like, you know, people don't, people don't really think about that. Like, cause you're right-handed, you know, and you're skating the park. It doesn't mean like somebody else who's, or even if you wanted a switch day, like you want to skate the same things, but the opposite side, you know? So it's like, just make sure you can have a balance, you know? It's crazy. Depending on what hand you're dominant in, it depends on what kind of experience that you can have. And so it didn't even like hit me until like, you know, we opened up our shop in Indy and we're like, you know, we had some left-handed people in there and I'm like, they're not having the same experience as me as a right-handed person. And it kind of made me sad. And then kind of made me, there's not really much I could do about it, but it's one of those things, like it definitely opened my eyes to some of the struggles for sure. Yeah. Like you see, I've seen, I've seen people come up to events and like they plan out their whole run because they've seen YouTube videos or something. And then as soon as they get there, they're like, oh, it's backwards. So I have to like come up with something new or I can't hit it the same way he's hitting it because it goes, it only goes this way. So, and that's just, like I'm always I'm a people person, so I'm always trying to think of like, okay, what what would be a problem that another person would have? Like, okay, somebody who's left handed, they can't hit it this way. So, and that was one of the things like having an ambidextrous park that flows would be so nice. So two people can hit it at the same time, left or right handed. Like you can you can skate the park basically all ways, and you don't have to worry about like I can't hit this or I have to hit this a certain way. You know, just put your fingerboard down and start fingerboarding that's it no definitely i i feel you for sure is there uh anybody you want to give a shout out to yeah benny from good vibes uh noel from ronin geo b dot new houston fb shout out to usa fbl uh let me see Shout out the whole San Antonio crew. 
Let me see. I know Texas runs deep. I know, man. It's so so many homies, dog. Shout out the whole the whole Texas crew. Shout out the whole Texas crew. All y'all. I love y'all. And thank you for accepting me and being so down and being so big and like being the scene that y'all are. Like everybody's excited about the California crew. And then you come to Texas and it's a whole nother vibe, dog. <laughs> no definitely it's interesting when we travel like we've been out west we've been to like denver we've been to los angeles you know we've been to texas like each like portion of the united states has its own like its own scene its own vibe its own culture like it is it's a unique experience for me to like literally just be able to travel the country and just experience all of these just vibes and different cultures and stuff like that we just left minneapolis and like Minneapolis always surprises me because like you don't ever think of Minneapolis as like even just just even on a map or a city period because you know it's just not a lot going on out there but man the vibe up there is just it's untouched it's unmatched and like you just don't even realize it you look like I leave that city every year and I'm just like man dude those those people are like awesome man I gotta go I gotta go check out the scene up there man (laughs) yeah for sure it's uh I don't know if it runs nearly as deep as like you know the Texas crew and stuff but like they're doing things up there it's fun outside of you think you think you there's a a bigger scene outside of Texas besides California uh Midwest is absolutely crazy um like we're here in Indy Indy has a scene Chicago has a scene that's only three and a half hours away like where we're located like Minneapolis is pretty much like centrally located I mean I'm two hours from Cincinnati Ohio we're five hours from Cleveland Ohio five hours from Detroit Michigan three and a half hours from Chicago and so like we're so close to just all of these scenes out here and so like even for you guys in Texas there's a lot going on so like you know you can be in Dallas you'd be in Houston like what three hours four hours something like that so you guys have a lot of different options and stuff like that in Texas. And so California is pretty much the same way. There's stuff going on in Los Angeles, stuff going a little further south. I think there's something going up like in the San Francisco areas, San Jose, San Jose area. And of course, you know, you got like Salem, Oregon and all that stuff on the West Coast. So there's like a lot of stuff just kind of going on. What I've noticed though, is that like, there's a huge like corridor in the United States from like, Oklahoma to like Las Vegas like there's just like nothing nothing just straight up and down like there's no <laughs> population there's like like I want to go out west but like I literally have to drive like a full day across the desert to get to civilization <laughs> like there's this like California to me is like on an island like California is basically an island to me because it's like I literally have to travel across a desert for a whole day no trees just brown just dirt just yeah. to get there and i'm like man this is wild <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean driving to, driving to some cities in texas are like that like i'm i'm located in i understand what you mean because i'm located in central texas that's why i'm always able to meet out uh meet up with the homies in dallas and houston because houston's like three hours dallas is like two and a half san antonio's like two hours and then austin being the closest biggest city is like an hour so i'm i'm all right there definitely yeah so we are we're fortunate i think to be close to civilization i guess you would say so for sure yeah. so jordan where can people find you on social media uh on instagram you can find me at tricky underscore fingerboards on tiktok you can find me at mr combo king and on youtube you can find me at tricky fingerboards well there you have it well jordan it's been an absolute pleasure i appreciate you coming on to the show thank you for having me No worries. Till next time. Next time.